Hi, I'm Peter. And my name is Aaron. And today we're going to talk about platonic solids. So Peter, what exactly is a platonic solid? So a platonic solid, I've got one here, is a three-dimensional polyhedron with all the faces that are exactly the same and all the corners are vertices that are also exactly the same. So Peter, if I went to any corner on this three-dimensional polyhedron, I would be able to see the exact same shapes connecting at one same corner, correct? That's exactly the plan, yes. Okay. So, that's a platonic solid. And we're going to try to make one. Okay, so is there some sort of way that we could try and do that, maybe with some sort of manipulative or object? Actually, yes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to make a polygon. Okay. And so a polygon is a two-dimensional shape using straight lines, and it's closed, which okay. means it encloses a space. So we're going to try to make a shape just now using just some lines. So Peter, if this is a flat two-dimensional shape and right. we have a single straight line, there's no way that we can make a shape out of that with just the one line. So let's try adding another. Okay, so we've got two lines now and you can see we're getting close. Right, because I can see how when we have these two straight lines, they can meet to form a corner or a vertex, which is something that we'll need for our platonic solids. Right. And then here we have a third line now, and you can see now that we've enclosed a space right. with our shape. So to me, this looks like a triangle. So I have a better way to represent a triangle that we can use to create a platonic solid. So if we take a look at this triangle here, this triangle is called a regular triangle or an equilateral triangle. And what that means is that all of the triangle's sides or its edges have the exact same length. Okay. I also know this is a triangle because it has one, two, three sides or edges, and it has one, two, three corners or vertices, and it also has one face on the top part here. All right. So starting with this one triangle, how can I start to create a platonic solid? So one thing we just saw with our lines was that we always needed more than two to right. make a shape, right? Mm -hmm. And it turns out that that is true when you're making a three-dimensional polyhedron as well, that you need at least two polygons to make a corner. Okay, so let's try that maybe just to visualize it a little bit better. So if I had a second triangle here, a second regular triangle, and I try and bring them together to share the same corner or vertex, what happens is that they almost flip together to create a 2D polygon. Right, so you've got just another triangle there again. Right, so why don't we try adding a third equilateral or regular triangle, All right. like so. And once again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to try and bring them together to form a shared corner or vertex. So when I do that with my three triangles, we can see that that's possible. So this beginning of a three-dimensional polyhedron is something that we can use to then create one of our platonic solids, correct? Yeah. So because we have this corner here, this vertex at the top, and we have all of our regular polygons on the outside, that means that we at least have a good beginning for a platonic solid, yeah. Excellent. So why don't I put this to the side for now, because I have another thing that I would like to try. Okay. Why don't we go back to my three triangles that I originally had, all right. and then I would like to add a fourth triangle. So if I add a fourth triangle here, actually let's try it over here. What I want to do again is to try and bring them together again. So if I take my green triangle and I try and connect it to my blue one here, what happens is that I create once again a single shared vertex or corner for all of these equilateral triangles. Okay. So I see where you're going there. You started with three triangles, and that was the least possible number we could use. Yes. And then you tried with four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to try with five. Okay, And Let's we'll see, see how, how that goes. goes. Perfect. All right, so I'm going five. to bring in my three triangles here, just like you did. And then I'm going to bring in a fourth and a fifth triangle. And then I'm going to join up my green and my orange edges. And so when I do that, I end up, again, with a corner, just like you did, but it's a bit more spread out now. Interesting. So I wonder, Peter, if we can keep going, if we can then use six equilateral triangles to make one of our platonic solids. All right. Well, let's give it a shot. So we have here, again, our three triangles. And I'm going to add a fourth one and a fifth one and a sixth one. And so you see now that I have a hexagon here made up of six equilateral triangles and that it is lying flat all by itself. Hmm. Interesting. And the reason for that is because triangles have an internal angle of 60 degrees and equilateral triangles have 60 degree internal angles, all three of them. And so when we multiply 60 by six, which is how many we have, we get 360 degrees and that's how many degrees are in a circle. Okay, so since our circle is a flat two-dimensional shape, 
this cannot be used to form right. one of our platonic salts. Right, so because our internal angles add up to the full measure of a circle, that this is a two-dimensional shape, and we can't turn it into a three-dimensional corner. Okay, so Peter, just to summarize, so far we've created three beginnings for our platonic solids using equilateral triangles. Right. Now, let's maybe add another side to our polygon, and let's try using a square. Okay. So what would it look like with a square? So with a square, we've got one square here, and I'm going to add a second one. And we remember that we need more than two shapes, because two squares, we can again fold them over and get one square. Right. So I'm going to open that back up, and I'm going to add now a third shape, and so we have three squares. I'm going to fold it up now, and we have another corner. Interesting. So Peter, if we have looked at triangles which have three sides, right. squares that have four sides, why don't we look at a pentagon, which is a shape that has five sides. All right. And the so. pentagon I'm going to look at is, once again, a regular pentagon. So it is a polygon that has all of the same length for all of the sides. Okay? All right. So we know we need more than two. So all right. let's add a so second. So here have three. Perfect. So if I add my third one here, and once again I want to try and bring them together to form a shared corner or vertex, we can see that that is also successful. All right. So Peter, I have a question. If I have my three pentagons here, what if I wanted to try four pentagons? How do we know that that doesn't work? So we can actually prove this visually, Aaron, just by looking at the space in here where you'd put your fourth pentagon. Mm -hmm. And because we need the corner to be shared by all four, right? And so if we have the same pentagon here and we try to shove it into this tiny little space, we know it won't fit. Okay. And so that's how we know we can only use three pentagons. Interesting. So the corner that we've created with our pentagons is going to move over to our collection over here. And All why right. don't we look at adding another side to our original polygon. So adding a sixth side to make a hexagon. Okay, so we're going to now try creating a corner with hexagons. Now we remember that hexagons were where we had to stop adding sides to our polygon because they lay flat. Right. Okay, so now I'm going to try now with three hexagons because we need at least three. And I'm going to just stick the purple one and the blue one together. And now I'm going to choose this corner because this is going to be our shared corner. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put the red one in here as well. And we can see again that it lies flat. And again, the reason is, and because we're using these triangles to make the hexagons, we can see that when we join three hexagons, we actually get another hexagon. Mm -hmm. And so that won't work for a platonic solid. Right. But it was a good try. <laughs> So would you say then that there are five platonic solids that exist, seeing as we were able to create one, two, three, four, five beginnings with our corners out of triangles, squares, and pentagons? That is exactly how we prove that there are five platonic solids. Okay. Well, would what? you like to build some? Yes. All right. Let's build some platonic solids. Okay. So I have an idea. I can see the shape of a triangle on this corner being formed already on the bottom. So would I be able to have another triangle to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So as we can see, the polyhedron that I've created is a platonic solid because it has all faces that are the exact same polygon, which is an equilateral triangle. And each of these faces comes together to form a single vertex or point around the three-dimensional shape. So we've got our First platonic solid, and that's a tetrahedron, okay. as you said. And so now I think I'd like to try this one with the squares. And so I'm going to add some more squares to my shape until I get something I recognize. And this we call a cube. Excellent. Right? So, Peter, a cube is something that a lot of us already know, so it's kind of interesting to know that a cube mm -hmm. is a platonic solid. Yeah. It also, it also has a Greek name, and it's a hexahedron. Interesting. And Why would it be called a hexahedron? So, the Greeks used different number names for different numbers, and so we have mono and bi for one and two, and then we have tri for three for triangle, and then tetra for four, and so that's where your tetrahedron comes from. Okay. And then penta for five, so your pentagons, these ones here, are pentagons. And then hexagons have six sides, and hexahedrons have six faces. Interesting. So, so if we have a hexahedron, I would like to look at our next beginning corner here. So what I would like to do is try and add almost another exact same grouping of triangles 
to the bottom of this. So can we try that? Alrighty. So there's your triangles. So what I'm going to do with my triangles again, bring them together to form that shared corner, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and attach them at the bottom edges of all of these triangles, like oh, so. Oh, that's awesome. So Peter, since this three-dimensional shape has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces, mm -hmm. would this be called an octahedron? That's exactly right. Okay, I think I'm getting the pattern. You know, sometimes. We do get patterns in math. <laughs> so the next one maybe we'll try is the one using these pentagons. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. So if I have my group of three regular pentagons here, how could I then put them together to make a platonic solid? Well, I have a whole bunch more pentagons here that we can use. Okay. And so, again, the thing is that we need to use the same corners all the time. Okay. And that will be the most important thing. So I think we're going to start by putting a pentagon on each of the five sides of my pentagon in the center here. Okay. And then I'm going to start bringing them up. All right. So, so it looks like you're almost halfway there. I think so. So I think what I'm going to do next is just keep adding pentagons into these corners here. All right. So let's do some of that. And our last one All right. on the top. Perfect. All right, so how many faces does that have? I lost track. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so once you get past ten in Greek numbers, things get a little tricky. Okay. And so this one is called a dodecahedron. All right. Do for two, deca for ten, and hedron for number of faces. Okay, so our twelve-faced dodecahedron is our next platonic solid, and we All still right. have one and more. We to still create. have the last one here, and this is going to be the most complicated one. And so this is called an icosahedron. It's going to have twenty equilateral triangles as its faces. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it together, and how it works is we're going to create this little happy starfish here, and then I'm going to make another one of these corners that we made the first time. Okay. Seems like there's almost a pattern with some of these. You kind of start to create the bottom and you almost create the exact same sort of shape on the top part and put them yeah. together. Yeah, so we remember that the platonic solids are all in with the goal of getting close to a circle, right? And yes. so the bottom and the top should be similar. And so with the icosahedron, when I lift it up, it's going to all snap into place just like that. And I turn it over, and then I put this corner I just made on top. And you can see now that I have 20 sides, all triangles, and that each of the corners, the, vertex, the vertices, is the same. All right, so just to summarize, so far we've created a tetrahedron okay. using equilateral triangles. Right, and it has four faces. Right. We also created a cube using our squares. All right, with six. Yep, and then next we also had our octahedron, and this right. had eight faces. Cool. So then we created our dodecahedron using our regular pentagons. And there's 12 of those for 12 faces, and then we have our icosahedron here, and that has 20 faces made up of triangles. Great, and these are all of our five platonic solids. They are, and we can actually see them out in the world. We use cubes for dice mm -hmm. all the time, and anybody who plays board games will know that, in fact, all of these get used as dice. Absolutely. This, this is your d20. Interesting. And so those are our platonic solids. Mm -hmm.